Welcome back everybody to a new video. Today we're going to be talking about virtual reality or VR, that's how I might know it. E3 is coming up around the corner in a few weeks and there's some big companies talking about virtual reality already which have their headsets, Oculus, HTC Vive, Sony with the PlayStation VR. But today in this episode we're going to talk about the top five things you need to know about Google VR. Let's get into it, shall we? So let's talk about the headsets right now. So right now at Google's conference in 2014, they revealed and launched Google Cardboard, which I actually have right here. Um, the price varies around 15 to $25, dirt cheap really. Um, and I picked this up from Amazon for about $18. The reason why the price varies is because Google sort of stepped away from the production and let third party manufacturers pick it up and produce their own type thing. So this is $18. Uh, because I had this head strap. The price probably changed. I don't know what company made this. Uh, I actually forgot. <laughs> but it's pretty good. Pretty good build quality for $18 to hop into the virtual reality world. That's pretty pretty cheap. Um, so we have Google Cardboard. And Google is still uh, producing Google Cardboard and everything. But at their I.O. event that just happened a few weeks ago in 2016. If you're watching this video later. Uh, is their Google Daydream. Um, so what well, Google da Daydream is their Daydream virtual reality type thing. So what they're doing right now, um, if they've given out just the concept design really uh, of the headset, which is sort of like Samsung's virtual reality headset, um, where you snap in your phone in there and it's probably gonna be a little more high quality instead of a cardboard piece, probably more comfortable uh, and it probably will help out on the motion sickness because I've personally felt on um, some apps, I just get way too motion sickness and I actually have to stop the app. Like I just can't do it. Um, so they're probably helping out that. But as we also saw in the design is there's a controller and that is actually crucial because as I personally, when I started using um, the cardboard and I've made my family use it and some of my friends use it, um, I have noticed that everyone sort of looks down to look at their hands to try to grab or touch something. Um, and this is where I'm actually going to be very focused at E3 to see if any other companies have, are trying to produce um, external devices to get our body into the actual virtual reality. So right now for like HTC Vive, we have the two controllers, um, which is very good. Uh, I don't like the Oculus with the Xbox 360 controller. It sort of, it messes with your brain a little bit. Um, but this Google um Control is very small. It's going to act like a Wii remote basically it has a touch um, button on the very top. It has an app button in the middle. Um, I'm assuming you just go to like an app menu um, and then there's a home button at the bottom. Um, so it's small. It's going to work pretty hand easily. Um, I've seen some videos of it. I'm sure you guys have as well. Uh, it's again more like a Wii remote. Um, and it helps you interact with the world around you. Uh, so that's going to be very interesting. And the design right now, again, we haven't seen a lot from Google about it. We've only got that concept design. So we can only assume that it's probably going to work towards a uh, Samsung VR somewhere around there, but probably more sleek design, sort of like um, the Oculus Rift design. Um, so I guess let's talk about prices right now. So it's definitely not going to be anywhere close to the flagship ones of Oculus uh, HTC Vive and the PlayStation VR. Those are, again, about $800, $900 way up there. I know the Sony PlayStation is a little less, probably around $400. I forget exactly what they released it to be. Um, and I'm hoping that since I have a PlayStation 4, I'm hoping that they're going to uh, decrease that. But that's <laughs> food for thought for another video. Um, for the pricing, again, the cardboard, $15, 15 to $25, uh, dirt cheap, nothing, nothing really about it, but you don't get much for it. And what Clay Baver has said, if I'm sorry, if I said your last name wrong, uh, who's the VP of virtual reality for Google. Um, he says, uh, the whole thing about daydream is to get uh, high quality mobile VR. And that's what the, Google's really pushing for is they're using uh, daydream ready is what they've been saying uh, phones so those are they're working with developers on Android more specifically not not really Apple but um, to get the phones with the hardware and the correct sensors and really get that buffed out and probably helps with like the motion sickness as well 
um, and it's going to give you a higher experience, higher quality, not a lot of delay um, when you click on any buttons or like what's happening in front of you, trying to get the frame rate up, get probably to 1080p because I know using my iPhone 5S um, on the Google Cardboard, it's still pretty bad quality. <laughs> uh, probably need to increase that one. So again, for the price range, we don't really know. Google hasn't really uh, released much about the price, uh, but it will probably be somewhere around the $100 range uh, just to compete against Samsung's VR because Samsung is about $99 if I remember correctly. Um, so really to compete in that market for the mobile um, VR game, they might be sitting somewhere around $100. But again, we always have to remember there is gonna be a controller um, added as well. So that might bump up the price to maybe 150, but no more than 200. Uh, it would just be unsensical to put, make it a more than $200 for mobile uh, VR. That's not really wise. Um, so I guess look, let's look into the partnerships um, that they're developing with. So right now uh, from their IO conference, we've seen a few um, a few companies that have already made apps with Google to show off on their demo, the Wall Street Journal, Hulu, Netflix, CNN, uh, Major League Baseball, and the NBA have all made apps. Uh, so they'll definitely be partnered with Google on the software side. They're also on the gaming side. Uh, Unity and Epic Gamings have already announced that they will be working in support uh, Daydream for Google. Uh, there's other game parties as well as Ubisoft, EA, uh, CCP, uh, and other companies like that. But on the development side, for producing it, they haven't really, for the headset or the controller as well, that they, they haven't really said any of their partners. It could be third party, sort of like their cardboard type thing, where they just let anyone design and manufacture it. Or they might be more like Sony, uh, not Sony, uh, my bad, Samsung. Uh, who has more specific, only this amount of people can produce it and we're working with them. So I feel like because it's more of a more of a flagship model, I'd probably say more to more professional, not like the cardboard where anyone can make that. Um, you can make it at home. I think this one's going to have more of a tight net group uh, of producers in there. So the potential of this is actually limitless if you really think about it. With the Google's new headset, which will help with um, visual, so it will look better, higher quality. It will be more comfortable instead of a cardboard piece of, on your head. Um, on top of which, it will probably help with motion sickness because I know using this device, I get motion sickness and I, uh, my grandparents definitely got motion sickness because they're, they're just not used to that. Um, so the design in itself, the potential has a lot more to build since they haven't released a release date on it yet, but I'm assuming they're gonna release it soon. Um, on top of which, gaming. Mobile gaming is huge right now. <laughs> the app gaming world is literally huge. There's a huge market for it. Um, and to hop into a mobile um, VR world is a huge step for Google because right now, um, the only thing for mobile gaming for VR is Samsung's VR headset. Um, yeah, you can use uh, the Google Cardboard and I have, um, but it's not really designed for much than just showing you what you can do with it. Um, and on top of which, it's not like a flagship model right now. It's not like an HTC Vive, it's not an Oculus Rift or the PlayStation VR. Those are $800 worth of technology designed purely for helping the VR experience to be more immersive, to put you in, to teleport you into the game. Um, for something that's gonna be probably a hundred to hundred fifty dollar range that's going to be monumental uh definitely for google side and they have a remote controller already put in um which will help you actually see your hand and be able to interact with the world instead of just clicking a button on the side of the controller or on the headset um on top of which learning is going to be huge um now that i've messed around with the cardboard uh a little bit and i found this app um, a, a YouTuber actually recommended it. It's Verse, uh, V-R-S-E is how you spell it. Um, and it just shows you how there's so much potential in virtual reality and how we can actually learn from it. So it's not just Google. Um, I know Google's definitely gonna hop in that world, um, but 
I can now understand why Facebook bought um, Oculus Rift for a few billion dollars is because using this app, it sort of shows how you can have storytelling, but through virtual reality. So it actually teleports you into like an alive like audiobook, so to speak, on some of the videos. Um, there was an article or a video. It's a 360 video. Most of them are. Um, some of them are animated. Um, some of them, there's one from Vice News. There's one about New Yorkers. Um, and it just, and it has, uh, I said omnidirectional. I think it is um, just audio. So like when you turn, you can hear it in that one ear um, if it's in that direction. Um, but again, huge step forward for that. And then there's always media consumption. So we saw apps uh, on the demo uh, and there's the Wall Street Journal, uh, the CNN. Uh, there's probably going to be BBC. There's probably going to be a bunch of people that are going to have news apps for consumption. I don't really know how that's going to work. Maybe for the 3D or 360 videos, my bad, not 3D. Um, on top of which, there's Netflix, Hulu, YouTube, um, all those videos. Again, it's probably just going to be a lot of 360 videos that we're going to see. Um, I don't really know how Netflix or Hulu is going to do it. I don't know if they're going to make specific content. I mean, Netflix is creating their own videos, their own movies, episodes, things like that, uh, TV series. Um, but it could just be uh, sort of like a, a screen that's attached to your face that you can walk around with. Uh, I mean, that's probably going to be a little dangerous. <laughs> but say you're like relaxing on the couch. Someone's already watching something on the TV and you don't want you don't want to lug your laptop up. I guess you can just put on some goggles and watch your TV show. I mean, you'd be really fully immersed on that one. Um, so yeah, the potential is really limitless. The only problem is right now Google is working with companies because they want daydream ready is what they're calling it. Uh, phones, um, because the phones need to be high enough specs, uh, and software has to be built for it, uh, for it to actually be a good immersive, um, design. But I guess that's where we're going to end off here. That's the five top things that you need to know about Google VR for right now. Uh, as always, like the video if you like it, dislike the video if you disliked it, and please tell me what your thoughts were in the comments down below. Always love the feedback, guys. Cheers.